Let's talk about COVID now. And uh, some of your deputy ministers and others have talked about how much money was spent on COVID. I mean, I, I know uh, from my own experience and from what I saw that this is the first time in the history of our country where people were asked to stay home and be paid. So, so yes, that, that must have occasioned some, some expenditure without productivity. So you shut down productivity, but you had to pay uh, the people. What else uh, happened at COVID that occasioned a lot of spending and a potential increase on our debt? I don't know. I mean, um, you know, Paul, um, COVID has been extraordinary. It's, there's nothing like that that happened since the Second World War globally, uh, in which what maybe 18 to 20 trillion uh, of money was used by the G20 countries um, to protect lives and livelihoods and, and stimulate the economy. Um, so did we do the same? I think uh, we were very bold about, about what we wanted to do. Uh, the question is when you do a lockdown and you have a huge informal market, that is an inability to be able to apply your trade any day. So what do you do as a country? You know, that really um, appreciates what the wealth of people are. And that's what led to uh, the food distribution, uh, free electricity, uh, free water. And it's really easy in hindsight to say, oh, well, where did you spend the money from? But there are really dire circumstances that we're talking about. And the issue even of getting our kids to school um, so that we did not miss that one year. Just imagine and the cost that came of it. And people also really um, um, look forward to their kids going to boarding school so that they have time to do their work. Um, so yes, um, we, we spent uh, considerable amounts of money, including um, not forgetting um, to do what we call the cup bus, which was like another 600 million to be able to give um, loans, etc. Uh, for people to restart their trade, their trade again. Um, so I think a, a full analysis of that, you know, is, 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 is done, is being done um, to show Ghanaians what we did with that resource. Um, but really um, looking at um, um, sort of what we did in our country versus what other African countries did, I think we should be proud of it. Certainly we should give a full account of the use of those proceeds. Uh, but I think sometimes the cynicism in my mind uh, is too much. You know, it's easy to be alive now and to think that, well, did you have to do that? Uh, but whose life should be, should be at stake? And I think it's very laudable what the president did with fellow Ghanaians in that period um, to keep us, you know, motivated, excited, knowing that uh, we were being taken care of during that period. Uh, but I think we've gone through the worst of that, and this is where uh, the new beginning, uh, the new deal um, of now moving into an entrepreneurial nation and finding ways to support uh, this new era uh, comes into being. So this is, for me, a very seminal budget uh, in which we are asking ourselves what are we going to do with our youth and try to inoculate it with this policy how do we send the private sector um, so that they can also hire more people? And in that vein, I think we have some productivity um, um, seminars that we are going to do with the unions and employers to look at ourselves as to what we do at work um, to increase, increase productivity. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. I think COVID for most African finance ministers during this time was also understanding that you know health is not a consumption issue but an investment issue and it changes your mindset as to how to finance it that they, they are not just pests you know coming at you but truly how do you build for the future to make sure that the health of your people you know can be protected